In lesson three, we're going to learn about the different parts of the Microsoft Access interface. Starting Microsoft Access depends on which version of Windows you have and how Access was set up on your computer. The machine that I'm currently using has Windows 7. You can see I've set up a quick launch icon right here on my taskbar. You can also find Access by clicking on your Start button, then going to All Programs, finding Microsoft Office, and then click on Access 2013. If you're using Windows 8, go to your Start menu and find the Access 2013 tile. Once you start Microsoft Access, you'll see this screen. Unlike Word and Excel, Access does not automatically start you up into a blank document. We have to first create a database file, a shell for all of our stuff to go into, our tables, forms, queries, and so on. Here you will see some options for creating a new database. There's custom web app, blank desktop database, that's what we'll be using. Then you'll see there are some templates available for asset tracking, contacts, project management, and so on. The templates are pre-built databases that you can use to get started if you're in a hurry. But we're here today to learn how to build databases ourselves. So we're not going to start with a template. We're going to start with a blank desktop database. So go ahead now and click on blank desktop database. You'll see this window appear. Access wants to know where you want to save your database file. You'll see the folder right here, C, Users, Rick, Documents. That's my Documents folder. The file name is database6.accdb. Now the reason why it's database6 is because I've created probably five other databases that are sitting in that folder right now. You may see database1 or database20. accdb is a Windows file extension that tells Windows this is a Microsoft Access database. If you don't see the ACCDB there, don't worry about it. You may have file extensions turned off in Windows, which is actually the default setting. Now you can leave database 6 if you want to, but I like to give my databases descriptive names so I know what each database includes. So I'm going to come in here and change this to PC Resale. We're going to make a database for a fictional computer resale company called PC Resale. Now you don't have to type the ACCDB on there if you don't want to. Just leave it PC Resale. If you want to change the folder, the location where this database resides, you can click on this button to browse for a different location. But for now, I'm going to leave my database in my Documents folder. And now, go ahead and click on Create. After you click the Create button, Access builds a blank database file in the folder that you specified and it wants you to start building your first table. You'll see right here a tab that says Table 1, and up top it says Table Tools. That's because Access set up a blank table, and it wants us to fill in the blanks. Now there are a couple of different ways to construct a table. This is one of them. I personally don't care for this method, so I'm going to cancel building Table 1, and I'm going to show you a different way to set it up. So over here on the right side of the window, find that little X. That's the close button. I want you to click on that, and that will cancel building table one. Now I'm left with a blank database container with no objects in it. Now a Microsoft database file contains all of the objects that we're going to build, all the things we learned about earlier, all of your tables, queries, forms, reports, and later on, when we get more advanced, our macros and modules. They'll all be stored inside of one database file. Those objects will be shown over here in this navigation pane that says All Access Objects on top. When you have some tables, they'll show up right here. Right now it's empty, but we're going to put some stuff in there in just a minute. Now before we begin actually building objects in our database, Let's take a few minutes and go over the different parts of the Access interface. If you've worked with Word or Excel, you'll find some of this is familiar and some of it's different. Across the very top of the window, you'll find the title bar, 
The title bar will show the name of the database, the folder it's stored in, and the file format, in this case the Access 2007 to 2013 file format. Older versions of Microsoft Access have a different file format. In the upper right corner of the window, you'll find the window controls. These include the Close button, the Maximize or Restore button, the Minimize button, and the Help button. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how these buttons work, you should take my Windows Beginner class. The Close button, of course, closes the Access application. The Maximize button makes Access fill the entire screen, at which point it changes to the Restore button. The Restore button will then restore the window down to a normal sized window. The Minimize button sends Access down to your taskbar but keeps it running. And of course the Help button will launch Microsoft's Help website. In the upper left corner we have the Control Box and the Quick Access Toolbar. The Control Box is right there. It looks like a little Access logo. This is a throwback to the old Windows 3.1 days. You can click on that to move, size, minimize, maximize, or close the window. Back in the old days, you used to have to double click on that to close a window before they added the X in the upper right corner. Then next to that, we have the Quick Access Toolbar. There's options on here to save the current object, the undo and redo buttons, and you can add your own commands to the Quick Access Toolbar right here. We'll talk about this in a future lesson. The Quick Access Toolbar is where you place buttons that you use a lot. For example, I usually place the Design View button, the Form View button, and the Left Align button on there. Below the title bar, you'll find the ribbon, which is Microsoft's menu interface. It was introduced in Office 2007. If you're familiar with versions of Microsoft Office before 2007, you'll find the ribbon is a radical departure from previous menus. I'll be completely honest, at first I didn't like the ribbon, but once you get used to it, you'll find it really is a better menuing system. The ribbon was designed to group menuing commands together to make things easier to find. And the commands will change based on what you're doing in the database. The ribbon's divided up into different tabs. You'll see Home, Create, External Data, Database Tools, and way over on the left here you'll see a File tab. Additional tabs, such as the Table Tools tab that we saw earlier, may appear depending on what you're doing in the database. You'll see that right now most of these commands are grayed out. For example, this is the Sort Ascending button, and I have nothing to sort. You have to select some data first, and then this command will become available. To create an object, you come over to the Create tab, and here I can create a table, or a query, or a form. Inside each tab, you'll see that all the different commands are organized inside of groups. For example, here are all the tables buttons, the different queries buttons, forms. If you go back to the Home tab, you'll see Sort and Filter commands are all grouped together. Find commands are all grouped together, and so on. Now, the ribbon is designed to be dynamic, as I mentioned a minute ago. The commands that are available will change based on what you're doing. The ribbon may also change based on how large your window is. So for example, if I grab the side of the window and drag it in, you can see all the commands are condensing into little groups here. Now the forms commands are all in this little drop-down box. So based on the size of your access window, what you see in the ribbon may change. So your menus may not look exactly like mine. Many times while I'm recording videos, I will make my access window smaller so I can fit more in the video window. If you're using Access Full Screen, you may see more information in your ribbon. If you can't remember what a button does, just hold your mouse over it. A little pop-up help window appears to explain the button's function. We're only going to work with a couple of these buttons today, but as time goes on, you'll learn more and more of them. Now, if screen space is at a premium, if you have a small monitor, for example, and you don't have a lot of space available, you can minimize the ribbon by simply double-clicking on one of the ribbon's tabs. I've just condensed the ribbon up. 
you can still access these features by clicking on the individual tab groups. For example, I can access external data by clicking right here. Then when you're done, it'll collapse back up. You can bring the ribbon back full time by double clicking again on one of these tab headers. There's also a little button over here you can use to collapse the ribbon. To bring it back again, just double click. As with everything in Microsoft Office, there's five ways to do just about anything you can think of. So you can also right click on a tab header and go collapse the ribbon. I generally find one way that works best for me and just remember that one. No need to remember five ways to do everything. On the left side of the screen, you'll find the navigation pane. This is where all the different objects you create in your database will be displayed. Here's a database, for example, with two objects in it. There's a customer T table and a customer F form. When you create more objects, like additional tables or queries or reports, they'll show up here in the navigation pane. You can resize the navigation pane by clicking on its rightmost border and dragging it left or right. You can also hide it by clicking on this little double chevron right here that closes it and then reopens it. Way down on the bottom of the window, you'll find the status bar. Most of the time, the status bar just says ready. Here's a different database. Sometimes the status bar will tell you if it's calculating something. It's in the middle of processing some information. Sometimes the status bar will give you some help. For example, here in Design View, it'll tell you you can use F6 to switch panes or F1 for help. And sometimes you can even program these yourself. For example, you can make a prompt that says this is the customer's first name. So when your end user is typing in data, either in a table or a form, they'll get a prompt on the bottom explaining what kind of data that is. In the bottom right corner of the status bar, you'll see some buttons to switch between design view or data sheet view. We'll talk about what these are soon. The status of the numlock key, the caps lock key, and so on, depending on the situation. And finally, we have this big area here called the object pane. That's where all of your tables, forms, queries, and such will be displayed. So that's a quick tour of the Microsoft Access 2013 interface. In the next lesson, we'll begin by building our first table.